Hey everybody, Pastor Ryan here with you today with a special encourager for this week. One that would help us to see the way in which our posture of prayer and the way that we hear our Lord and Savior Jesus might just change the way that we face the life that he's leading us into, especially in days where our temper, or can we say it this way, even at times if we've chosen a road of bitterness, how those things can be turned on their head, just as Jesus turns the wisdom of the world on its head. I'm bringing to you today a special word from Matthew chapter 5. It's going to start for us today here at verse 38. This is part of Jesus' greatest sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. We get to hear in two sections Jesus' words concerning eye for an eye judgment and also how we are to love our enemies. So hear the word of the Lord today. Eye for an eye, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, have him take your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him for two. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Jesus continues with a familiar opening phrase, You've heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on righteous as well as unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, in these texts, there's all kinds of ground that we can cover in every way sacrificing out of love for the neighbor, giving those who are otherwise perhaps unknown or undeserving a kindness. We could also go to a word of judgment, reminding us that we are not built to judge, even as God says vengeance belongs to him, he will repay. We could certainly go the road of talking about things like antagonism and lawsuits and all of those kinds of other duties that we see this side of heaven. But I thought I would just simply lift out the phrase for us today, a phrase that is disarming and otherwise changes the mood or temperament in the room. And it has everything to do with a posture of prayer and the way that we live out our lives, not only in the face of the world, but in the face of God as well. It's Jesus' phrase that's repeated, I believe, some five times over in Matthew chapter 5 and 6, when Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, and then says, now I tell you. Most often, even in good faith, when we face the world, we live as if we're to be entirely on defense. Uh, if you can imagine in that regard, it's, it's like we're facing the world with a fight. So you can almost envision like a boxer who's training to have those closed hands ready uh, to, to make a defense. But when it comes to the defense of faith and the way that we're meant to treat our neighbor, Jesus takes us from a place of clenched fists and temperament to a place of open hands, not only so that we're ready to receive the good that God has, but we're also ready to offer to those who are hurting in the same ways that we've been hurting for some time. This is often in some ways called the Gospel of the Wounded Healer, popularized by author Henry Nouwen. It's, it's a gospel that certainly looks to say the moment like Jesus' death on the cross in Calvary and says, wow, look at the kind of healing that we have received through Christ's wounds. Maybe, just maybe, by the power of his own Holy Spirit, he will bring healing to others through the ways that we've been wounded. 
if you see an immense joy in that kind of gospel, then you have it right in good faith. It's a moment where we're otherwise disarmed of all of those things that have marred and kind of nagged at us for our life, and instead reminds us that in Christ all things are made new and transformed. We move from a place of sheer defense and fight to a place of receiving and providing. It's that kind of willingness to give and take that makes us palms up and open-handed. I don't know what it's like for you, but we could describe it in this way. Even if you're not much of a fighter, there are times where outside of our physical training, of course, we know how we use our tongue and the words that stem from our thoughts. If you think of the way that your words might be otherwise clenched fist, right? We get to that place, of course, by way of our own mood and temperament that we know things like contentment and bitterness are both choices. You could have entirely everything that God has provided for you that you need for your daily living, and you could still choose to be bitter, though you are so blessed. And you might also see those who otherwise seemingly have nothing to their name in the world, and yet they've chosen to be entirely content. To go from a place of being clenched fists to open palms is that way that God actually disarms us and has us know even in our own minds. When we approach anything otherwise open-handed, our mood and temperament is changed. If you think about the way that you might even have a conversation, if your hands are clenched when you're sitting at a table, odds are your words are going to be charged and ready not only to be assertive, but assertive with evidence and ammunition. Well, in that regard, if you show up to a conversation or argument planning to win, in some ways you've already lost. And so it is especially even in our thoughts, our words, and the way that we approach the world, we would be palms up and open-handed in our thought, word, and deed, so that we're ready to serve in the same way that we have been served. My prayer for you today is that Jesus' own disarming word that turns the world's wisdom on its head and would have us ready not only at times to make those necessary sacrifices, but to go to a place of calm and kindness, not soft in any way, shape, or form, but being ready to deliver to others the same promises and blessings that we have been delivered and yet still anticipate as our Lord draws us closer to his side. As we close perhaps today, as Jesus would direct, why don't we share a prayer that would have us again palms up and open and certainly sharing words of blessing on behalf of any and all who would be our enemies or otherwise unknown to us in their time of need. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you this day open-handed, ready to receive already having received immense blessings of being named before the face of our Heavenly Father and granted such beautiful truths as forgiveness and life everlasting, the measure of your Spirit in power, in presence, in peace, in grace and mercy, so many things that otherwise go unnumbered this side of heaven, and yet, Lord, your presence finds us grateful. We pray that for as much as you have delivered into our laps, as those blessings overflow, we would reach out and pour into the lives of others. We remember before you this day those who are otherwise embittered or antagonistic or would otherwise be enemy to your saving truth. We pray that you would convert those hearts that are not yet your own and yet enrich ours so that our own hearts do not harden within us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to make us to be blessings to others as you have so freely blessed us, even as you called your dear servant Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. You blessed him to be a blessing, and we pray that our lives would overflow with the same. Guide and bless us this day as we face your world palms up and open-handed for as much as we have received, ready to give to the glory of your name. In your holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
May God richly bless you as you go about this next week, and certainly the days ahead. May he continue to give you those opportunities where you face his world palms up and open-handed, ready to give yet again to your neighbors and even those who you might not even know yet, as you continue to show God's own blessing and promise, his love and his truth to a world that sorely needs it. God's peace to you. We'll see you soon. Goodbye for now.